when you look at that album, what's your favorite song on that? You know, it depends on the day. So today I'll just go with old school uh, just because I feel like it was like I just felt so torn between trying to please everybody mm -hmm. and I just felt like 30 different people at the same time trying to, you know, be all I could be to different people. And so today that I'll go with old school, you know, because uh, it's just I feel like I was able to just just capture where I was in that moment of time and uh, encourage people and, and just be just say whatever I wanted to say, you know. I don't understand. I, I listened to your music today and, and yesterday, and I listened to Forecast and later to Now Is Not Forever. Why didn't you put Cold World on Now Is Not Forever? Right. You know, I, that's a great question. You know, for me, I, I was on a label, and there were there's a lot of there's a lot of things that, in retrospect, you always think of you could have done differently. And you know, at the time, we just had to pick you know, a couple songs to, to transfer over. And, um, you know, Cold World was one of those that, I don't know, but hey, if you would have said that to me two years ago, maybe we would have done it. I, I never even crossed my mind, you know? I love that song, the, the chorus. It's a cold, cold world. Just Go the, ahead and say, the, man. Uh, yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying. But I love that song. I, I really love that one. But but the, of the ones that are on the album, just for you, it's a great song. You, you said it wouldn't get on the radio, but it was over here. Oh, well, that's great. That's good to hear. Because it, yeah. it's, it's a good song, man. Thank you. Yeah, I was sitting in my room, and I just started playing, and the words came out, and it, and it was one of those where I I just kind of heard the melody in my head and, and in that time, and, and, and I was very aware that I was writing for a lot of different reasons than just mm -hmm. to just to bless um, God, just to sing back to the create to my Creator. You've shot a, a few videos, and I really want to know the concept because we're playing one video this season, and next season we're, we're playing some others. But um, when you look at the video "Comeback Kid," what's the concept of the song and the mm -hmm. video? Yeah, uh, "Comeback Kid." What's funny is I was. You know, the guy that manages manages me, his name is Calvin, and, and yeah. I had the song idea for Comeback Kid and on a Saturday, and that next Sunday, we were talking, and he said, you'll never believe the title of my pastor's sermon today. It was the Comeback Kid. It was a pretty crazy scenario and coincidence, but, you know, I think a lot of the times I've thought that, you know, I had to have it all together, and I had to get to a place where... I I wasn't constantly getting knocked down and I kind of felt like I had control over my life and I think what I learned you know over the years is it's it's more important that we get back up when we get knocked down it's not that we don't get knocked down because when you really really try to live life and be bold and and try to live outside of and go beyond yourself that's when failure is I don't want to say failure is inevitable, but you're going to take some hits along the way. And so Comeback Kid is just a, an anthem of resilience that, that I, I, I feel strong in my heart that I believe that through the course of my life, I personally am, am, am a, a kid at heart that is going to keep getting back up. And, and for, for real, you know, for kids out there and grownups that are just facing situations that they just feel like keep knocking them down. In getting up, that is the the process that makes us stronger. Um, having to get up and having to deal with it over and over again, that's a that's a building of perseverance. Um, the video was uh, kind of along the same lines of the song. I mean, when Calvin and the a guy named Donald Kilgore, they were kind of co-directing it. They just saw a boxing ring, you know, and saw a band in a boxing ring, and you know the analogies of a fighter and um, originally we were going to have me fighting and, uh, that sounded cool, but we decided to, you know, not go so literal. Um, and so that's the comparison. It, life is a fight. And I think so often I feel like being the smartest or being the best isn't necessarily as important as being able to endure, um, life, you know? So 
All right, all right. So uh, another video uh, of, of your album, Antidote. Can you tell me something about it? Antidote was awesome on the video side of things. Um, a Bill, the Billy Graham Association, basically they have a, um, it's called um, Ransom, and they, they basically do videos for artists, and we had a relationship with one of the guys, Kevin, and they just did a phenomenal job. I mean, um, once again, Calvin and them kind of co-directed it, but the song is just a story about a specific girl that, represents all of us um, in that there is a emptiness inside, um, there's this yearning to be complete and to be made whole and the it's like a poison that eats away at us um, and you know what I believe is that that poison is actually our disconnect from God, it's our desire to be complete by ourselves and the antidote is the reconciliation of us back to God and us finding um, the true life and the real life in, in Jesus. And so the antidote being, you know, the, the answer to the poison, the thing that makes everything right again. And so the video was just a beautiful kind of well shot, um, just really I, I love the video I feel like the video brings the song to life you know and shows the a picture of the girl that's wrestling and, and dealing with just just tons of issues of feeling alone and um, hopeless you know so that was an awesome experience shooting that yeah it's, it's a beautiful it's, it's it's done beautiful with, with, with the way it was shot and the effects and everything is beautiful. So, um, one of your first videos, Awestruck. Um, yeah. One, my co-presenter, she really loves that one, and she showed it to her girlfriends, and they right. also loved it. She's like, "Oh wow, we love me, right? We love this song." But tell me about Awestruck. Well, yeah, before I recorded the forecast, I was sitting at a coffee shop and I was writing a, a birthday card to my mother. Um, and uh, this girl walked in, and, and it doesn't happen a lot, but I don't know. Something about her just got my attention and, and just kind of, I was just frozen, you know. And uh, it was one of those things where you're like, ah, uh, you know, you know my, my, yeah, the, the, my introvert uh, took over at that point, And before I could even respond, she was in and out. And when, you know, as I was leaving, that this line popped into my head. It was, you know, you make my heart stop beating. Had to go to the doctor to check my breathing, and because I I felt it in that moment, it was like she made. I didn't even know this girl, but she like made my world stop, you know. And so, with the Ryan Hamblin is the name of the guy that directed that video. When I told him the story behind the song, he was like, "Well, let's just shoot it like that. Let's shoot you in a coffee shop, and you're sitting there and." We got one of our good friends, her name is Tessa, she was the girl in the video and she did an amazing job and I just, we just shot it like it was a real story and they, they even did the green screen where there was two of me and I'm sitting there watching myself, imagining myself sing to her, talk to her and then playing this out in my mind and then of course in the end, um, if you haven't seen it, I'm sorry I ruined it for you, but <laughs> it, it was just a just kind of a fantasy in my mind and um so that was a fun one that was that was cool yeah wait um so um you left Gotti records why did you leave Gotti records yeah it's actually pronounced goatee but hey uh, you could say yeah? Gotti. I, I don't I, care oh goatee I, records of course goatee Records. Yeah, I don't I like so actually stupid. like got Gotti records it sounds gangster you know <laughs> I'm sorry yeah, yeah, but man, you know what it was? It was I think the the record industry has really, um, I like a lot of other industries, has taken a big hit financially. And so, for an artist like me that is so diverse and wants to do so many different things, from writing to co-producing, I felt like we we were kind of fizzling out over the years. You know, now is not forever came out and. It was it was more or less I I didn't feel like we were 
if we stuck it out, um, and we both agreed that we were really going to be able to accomplish what we both wanted to accomplish. Um, and their strengths are probably in areas that I didn't know this four years ago, but now I've learned they're not exactly the directions that I'm called to go. Um, my strengths are more as a writer and an artist than, I, than they are as somebody who could thrive within the parameters of the Christian music industry. Um, and some people are great at that and called to that. Um, I probably feel more just kind of, you know, called the both sides of, of secular and, and Christian and all that stuff. So, man, we, we had a great meeting, and, and I just saw Toby today at a lunch, Toby Mac, and we get along. I love him and his family, and it was, there is no animosity. I just, it just came down to, I think it was best to, to operate apart from each other. So. so, let's talk about your future. You now released uh, your single, Knocking on My Door, like a month ago. Yes. Um, do you have any plans for a new album? Yes, uh, I am working uh, very hard on putting out a record in the fall. Um, things are a little different now. Fall. Yeah, yeah, I know. There's, there's no promises, but that's the plan. I mean, I have songs. Yeah, I have songs, and I have, you know, for me, the recording process is is very challenging, and it's awesome, but it's to get it to the place that I feel, I want people to be able to trust the the music of of Be Right, you know, to, and so I go to great lengths to make sure that it's at a certain level. So Knocking on My Door, we just put out kind of as a teaser, just to kind of keep people, you know, let them know that I'm, I didn't disappear off the yeah. the the map. Um, but yeah, I've got a lot of work cut out. I've got I've got some good songs. I believe in them, but I'm still gonna write some more. And um, you know, if it's a full length in the fall, great. Uh, we're we're planning and believing for that um, and working towards that. Um, but hey, we'll see what tomorrow holds. You know, we don't, we don't know.